What's up guys, it's Sammy Cheese here, back with another video. Now in today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to make a tic-tac-toe game in Scratch 3.0. Let's get started. First thing that you want to do is to delete the Scratch Cat, and then go to Backdrops, and make the tic-tac-toe board. And the next thing that you will be doing is making the screen for picking who goes first, X or O. I'll put a preview on screen of the game right now, just so that you know what we are coding. As you can see, it says who goes first, X or O, and you click on it to decide. By the way, this is all in one sprite. And then all you have to do is just take turns clicking, and then whoever wins, just press R or B, and red or blue will win. And the next thing will be the screen for picking who goes first, X or O. For example, this is mine. Who goes first? Click on X or O. And then make a screen for X wins and O wins. Here are my X and O win screens. Once you're done with that, make a new sprite, and this sprite will be for placing the X and O's on the board. So make two costumes, one will be X and one will be O. For example, here's my X and my O. Once you're done with that, go to code. And the first thing that you will be coding is the screen where you decide if X or O goes first. And this will be done using clones. First thing you want to do is go to the backdrops and switch to the backdrop where you pick if X or O goes first to find a good X and Y position to click on X or O. Right now, just find a good position and size for this X to be clicked on if X goes first. So what I mean by find a good X and Y position for the X and O is something like this. Find a good X and Y position for it to go and a size. Keep in mind, this is just for clicking on it. This is not actually for placing it on the board. And once you have a good X and Y position, either for your X or O, just do one right now. What you want to do is you just want to go to events, one green flag clicked, looks, hide. Then what you want to do is you want to go to switch costume to your O costume. So for me, that's costume one. And then go to control, create clone of myself, go back into looks, go to switch costume to, now back to your X or O or whatever you did for your X and Y coordinates. Then go to variables, make a new variable, call it O or X. Then what you want to do is drag the set O or X to not picked. Go to looks, switch backdrop to pick or whatever this backdrop is. So for example, mine is pick. And then what you want to do is you want to put your X and Y position for whatever you chose. For example, I chose my X to go here and I'll code the O later. After that, just put a show block, go to control, grab a forever loop. And then what you want to do inside that forever loop is grab one if then block and another one below the other if then block. Once you have your if then loop blocks done, all you want to do is go to operators, grab an and block, put this inside the first if then loop, go to sensing, if mouse down and touching mouse pointer, then go to looks, switch backdrop to changes to your tic-tac-toe board, looks, hide, variables, set, ORX to whatever this is. So right now mine is X, but if this said O for you, change it to O. But mine is X, so I'm going to write X. After that, go to operators, grab an OR block, and then grab two equals blocks and put them inside the OR block, just like this. Then go to variables and grab a ORX block and put this in the first section of the equals block. So it should be looking something like this. Then change that 50 to O and the other 50 to X. Then what you want to do is drag it into this if then loop. Then go to control and stop changes to this script. What this is saying is if you click on either one of these X or O, which we will code later, then all it will do is just stop the script to avoid lag. Now if you test it out, as you can see, if you have your ORX here, I have my X. If I click on it, it switches to the tic-tac-toe board and ORX says X. So right now everything is working correctly. Now let's code the O. Now what you want to do is you just want to go to looks, Switch costume to changes to your O. So for example, this is my O costume and find a good X and Y position for your O. As you can see, now I have my O coordinates done. So since my X is going to be right here, I just move my O to the opposite side of the screen. So now let's code for clicking on the O. Go to control. When I start as a clone, forever grab an if then else block, put inside the if then portion, if and then change the 50 into whatever backdrop name that you pick your X and O with. So I just checked and mine is just called pick. So then I'm just going to change the 50 to pick and I'm going to go into looks. If backdrop changes to name equals pick, then go into looks, grab a show block and then put your O coordinates under the show block. So for example, my X is going to be here and this is for my O. It's going to be right here. Sorry if this is getting a little bit confusing. Then what you want to do is go to control, grab a forever loop, put this under the X and Y coordinates, grab an if then block, and inside that if then block, go to operators, grab an and block, put this inside the if then loop, and go to sensing, if, mouse down, and 
touching mouse pointer. So this is saying if the mouse is down and it's touching the O on the side of the screen, then go to variables, set changes to ORX to O. Then go to looks, switch backdrop to changes to your tic-tac-toe board and put this under the set ORX to O and put this right here. So now if you test your game, as you can see, there's an O and an X on the screen. And if you click one, the variable changes ORX changes to X. And if we click on the O, it changes to O. Right now, they, they don't hide themselves, so let's do that next. All you have to do is go to events, when backdrop switches to tic-tac-toe, looks, set back to your normal size, hide, and go to control, delete this clone. So now, if I click on the O, as you can see, ORX changes to O, and they're not there anymore. And if I do the same with X, same thing happens. ORX is X, and nothing's there. Now, let's code the actual tic-tac-toe game. So first thing you want to do is grab an if-then-else block and put this inside the else portion of the when I start as a clone. It's a bit confusing, but make sure you, you do it right or else the game will not work. Then go to operators, grab an equals block, and go to variables, grab a ORX and put this in the left side of the equals block, and do if ORX equals X. Drag this inside the if-then-else block, then go to control, wait, changes to 0.1 seconds, and put this inside the if portion of the if-then-else block, go to looks show go back into control grab a repeat until block and put this under the show and then what you want to do is you want to go to sensing repeat until mouse down motion go to changes to mouse pointer and put this inside the repeat until loop and then under the repeat until loop go to control again wait until go into operators grab a not block go to sensing mouse down and then put this under the repeat until block just like that and once you're done with that all you have to do is just go to variables, set changes to ORX to O, and then drag that under the wait until block. Then finally, go into control, stop, changes to this script, and put this under the set ORX to O. If you're wondering what it's doing, it's just saying if it's X's turn, what it will do is it will go to the mouse pointer until you click to place the X. And after that, it will set the turn to O's turn. So now let's code O's turn. O will be coded in the else portion of the if then else block. For the O portion, just right click on the wait 0.1 seconds, press duplicate and drag this down here. And then change the set O or X to O, change that to X and just drag that inside the else portion. And once you're done with that, go to events, one batch out switches to tic-tac-toe, forever, grab an if then loop block, go to operators, equals, change the 52X, put this inside the if then loop block, go to variables, O or X, put this on the left side, so if O or X equals X, then looks, hide, and go to switch costume to the X costume. Once you're done with that, go to control, grab a create clone of myself, then wait until, go to operators, grab an equals block, put this inside here, change it to wait until, this time write O instead of X, just like that. And then for the left side of the equals block, just put in an O or X block. And once you're done with the script, just duplicate it and change the X to an O and change the O to an X. And finally, change the X costume to the O costume. After that, just drag it under the if then loop block. And once you're done with that, let's code the final script of this project. Go to events, one grim flag clicked, forever, grab an if then loop block. And inside that, go to operators, grab an or block. And inside the or block, grab two equals blocks, just like this. Go into variables, grab O or X, and put this on the left side of these equal blocks, just like this, and then change one of the 50s to O and the other one to X. After that, put this inside the if then loop block, and once you're done with that, go back into control, grab an if then block, and inside the if then block, go to sensing, if key changes to R pressed. And once you're done with that, go to looks, switch back up to red winds, and then go to control, stop all. And once you're done with that, all you have to do is just duplicate this if then loop block just like that and change the R to a B and change the backdrop into your blue winds backdrop. Finally, just drag it under the other if then loop block. So it should be looking something like this. After that, go to variables and uncheck this box next to the O or X variable. If I test out my game and I click on X, X goes first and I can place it anywhere and then it switches to O's turn. And that's it for the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.